Just ahead on Crossroads, we're on location at River's Edge Family Golf. See how it's added pumpkins and hay rides to the family business. We talk with Jennifer Lane Riefler from Cancer Services about the Coloring Pink 5K. Hear from a historical consultant at Mississinawa 1812 and find out what it takes to relive history. And see how one local church is putting together apple pies for their annual fundraiser. It's all just ahead on Crossroads. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Crossroads. I'm Randall King. And I'm Shaylee Clark. And you can see we're out of the studio one more time. Lots of our favorite places in Grant County you'll see in this show, including right now at the River's Edge Family Golf Center. But it doesn't exactly look like a golf center now, does it? It doesn't. There's actually some more featurey things here. It's fall, so there's a touch of that. And you can just smell fall in the air. Yeah, you might see them behind us, some pumpkins and some hay rides going on, some people starting together. And as we said, we're going to check out a lot of different things. I love this time of year in Grant County, not just because of the color change and a little change in temperature, but you start adding up Mississinawa 1812 and all the festivals and other things like that. A lot of stuff to talk about. There really is, and I think it all goes back to the weather, making everyone want to get out. A lot of people don't like the hotter temperatures, so when it gets a little cooler, they leave the house. And before it gets cold, which we won't we'll talk about yet. But this is a fun place. A lot of people do know it for the summer because they know it for the Family Golf Center, but this is the time to be here now. It is. People have been coming here for years. Just someone was telling me a little bit ago how they golfed here when they were little. But this year, the family is bringing a little bit of a fall favorite to the business. It isn't fall if you don't bundle up and head out to find the perfect pumpkin at the pumpkin patch. And this year, the River's Edge Family Golf Center is bringing everyone's favorite fall feature to Marion. People come out in weather like this and just looking for a little bit more to do and thought of things that we've taken our kids to pumpkin patches before and there's nothing like this in Marion or even anywhere real close so we just thought that we'd try that. Aaron Johnson expanded the business this year by bringing hundreds of pumpkins from Peru to Marion. But he couldn't have done it without help from his loyal co-workers, his family. It's a family business. Our home is here. We actually live right inside the, where the customers come in. Um, we're one door away. The grandkids kind of disappeared when we unloaded 600 pumpkins, but uh, they came back when we got them all unloaded. We have a great time here as a, as a family. Uh, everybody pitches in, everybody works, and everybody enjoys it. The uh, grandkids get about 20 rides a week on the hay ride, and uh, so it's a, it's a blessing to be able to work together. Aaron's father-in-law helps with the business. He calls himself the grandpa of the group and gets the honors of driving another new addition to the business this year, the hay ride. Well, I love giving hay rides for one reason. It kind of brings back the farm family. and. The values of the farm family, I think, were, were what the country's built on. And we love just being a family and uh, working together and uh, have really enjoyed uh, a farm family type atmosphere here at, at the Gulf and the Patch. The idea for this family to pick up the business sparked from a wanting to stay at home with the kids. And the kids also get to contribute to the business. We get to do the cash register and that's really fun and we get to go on like all the hay rides. Everyone, when they come up, they're just like, um, sometimes they ask for someone else because they don't know I'm going to be doing it and it just feels a little weird. But the kids also enjoy having this fun business in their backyard. Well, I like that we get to go on hay rides for free and play minute golf for like whenever we want. It's a business for the family, but also gives people a way to celebrate fall in their own hometown. A lot of the families had to drive to Wabash or Noblesville <laughs> or to, to other towns uh, to enjoy the pumpkin patch. And so it's an opportunity to supply Marion with uh, something that they don't have to drive now to, to enjoy. Just something to do to get outside, um, you know, it, you, when fall comes, you're thinking other things. I know there, there are some you know, further away from Marion that people are going to, but this gives them something closer. And I think it's just a natural thing to want to be out in pumpkins and stuff in the fall. And we're just giving them a way to do it here closer. 
It may just be through some pumpkins and apple cider, but this family will continue working together to expand their business while keeping a fun fall tradition in Marion. Shaley, you and I share something. We're both pastor's kids, and we probably went on a lot of hay rides, like decades apart, oh but you, you've, you've done that yes. before. Oh yeah, that was the fall activity you always did. And I mean, even now, here they come. Got to ride in that, and it was so much fun. It brought back those memories. I, I always think about, you know, all the farmers that say, what's the deal? You're riding in a field, on, we're sitting on hay. I mean, what's, what's people, people want to do that? Yeah, it's, well, yes, it is a lot do. of fun. Even though we're from Indiana, we still want to do it. It's just a fall must. Well, this is a, a great must. thing for them to add to the river's edge. And then we said we're going to be bouncing all around Grant County in this show, and we'll be back here with a little bit more fun later. But when we come back, we'll head out to Matter Park for a brand new fall tradition. I talked with Jennifer Lane Riefler about the first annual Color Me Pink. Matter Park for the first Color Me Pink run, which is put on by Cancer Services here in Grant County. And here with me is Jennifer Lane Riefler. Good and morning. you are the big race director, first year. This is the race director hat, yes. The director of Cancer Services of Grant County, but this is our first ever color run, Color Me Pink. Um, it's all about pink in October, so we're raising money for our breast cancer program. Now, is this something other communities have started picking up on? How did you make this kind of the kickoff for October? Um, well, this is the first year we've been able to have an event in October and we decided we wanted to have a color run because people love them. And it's all about raising funds for our free mammogram program and our breast health education. We're trying to save lives. The program started in 2000 and we have diagnosed 43 women with breast cancer through that program who otherwise would not have been able to afford a mammogram. So we help them through that entire process and we're very happy to say that 41 of those women are survivors. So early detection saves lives and that's what it's all about, raising money to save lives. So what people are out here today, is it mostly survivors and family or is there a lot of people who are still, you know, going through cancer but they're here out to support? I think we have both. Um, a lot of people are out just because they love the color runs. Um, we have many survivor families. We have um, people who are survivors themselves that are running, some that aren't feeling well today. So we've got family members running in, in their honor today um, in support of them. But just a kind of a combination and local people are excited about having something about pink. So it's all about the pink today. And I mean, are you excited? Are you going to be running this? Are you expecting to get a little pink on you? I've been running since 7 a.m., so I will not be running in the race. However, I will be running around, making sure everything goes smoothly. We have over 300 people today. We're so excited about, you know, having that many people turn out for this first one. I couldn't have asked for a better day. Runners love it to be cool, not hot, and the dry is the good thing. Um, so, yeah, I, I wish I was running, but I'm not running, actually running the race. I'll be running to make sure the race goes off well. And um, what are some other things that Cancer Services is, go is going to be doing in October? You know, breast cancer awareness, do you have any other big events you're going to be preparing for? Well, we don't have any more fundraising events that we're actually hosting, but October is a big time for folks to raise money for us and for the program. So there are various different things at Tree of Life today. Actually, there's an event that they're having a breast cancer luncheon and educational um, event. So I've got staff going out there later today, but all month long there'll be things going on at Cancer Services Grant County. That's fantastic. And I know that Grant County seems to be a very supportive community. Community. Do you see that when you have fundraisers? There's no question. We couldn't pull off any of our events without the support of the community. We have the fire department, the EMA, the police department, the sheriff's department. They're all out holding hands with us and making sure that everything is it goes well and people are safe. And you know, the, the city, the county, everybody's out there helping us.
Welcome back to Crossroads. We're on location back at one of our favorite places, Mississippi 1812 Festival. And many years of coming out here, I don't think we've ever spent a lot of time in the British camp. Now, that's not <laughs> any kind of bias, but we just haven't gotten over yes, here. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Twist says it is. He's a historical <laughs> consultant who does things all over the world. In fact, he was a consultant and actually appeared in all the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. That's correct. Wow. So he's from the, originally from Canada. What do you do when you come to something like Mississippi 1812? What is your goal? It's obviously you're in the garb, you'll be in the battle. What are some of the things you're here to do? Well, we, uh, we do a variety of interpretive things. Um, of course, historically, the British Army wasn't at Mississippi, but it, it's to represent the whole War of 1812 experience. And uh, what, uh, what I do, for example, in battle is we have uh, tactical demonstrations throughout the weekend. So there's actually five. There's two on Saturday and two on Sunday and one on the Friday. And it t goes back and forth who wins each thing. And we basically script it and, uh, and work out a scenario that looks plausible for the audience. Um, it's a period of time that we, we mention this every year. A lot of people don't know as much. So, so mm -hmm. Mrs. Cinema 1812 is one of the largest festivals of its kind. What is it about that time period that attracted you? Uh, well, it, it's in North America, of course, the War of 1812 wasn't a, a, a really well known thing. But this period of history was sort of one of the first great world wars when the uh, when the British were fighting Napoleon and France and so on. So, I mean, it's just, it's a small part of this bigger world history, which is what drew me to it. And do you find the young and the old and everyone who comes up and talks to you wants to kind of pick your brain and really see that come alive? Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, just, just before we started this, somebody was asking me questions about naval uniforms and what do I need for this? <laughs> Re really fun. Well, you know, since you're on that, you've got a lot of swag on here. Mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> and uh, it, it goes with the garb. I'm, I'm assuming in the battle that we've seen that you'll, we'll see you are an officer of yep. sorts. Yep. And so this is, this is very this is, much the regal look. This is actually a, a brigadier general's uniform. Okay. Um, and this would be, uh, this is called the undress uniform, the dress uniform. This is all gold embroidery but on the undress uniform, it's just like a button stitch. Would that general usually be on a horse with, with ground troops usually? U usually they would, and usually they are somewhat to the rear, but still well within range of the enemy artillery and so on. So uh, generals on both sides in the War of 1812 uh, were wounded and some killed. They definitely weren't back in the tents no, <laughs> like behind not. us here. Well, let's see the, let's see the weaponry. Sure. Take it out very, very carefully because <laughs> I'm in so impressed. So this is, this is, um, actually a staff officer's model. It's a replica of uh, the British staff sword of the time. May I hold it? Yes, absolutely. Oh, wow. So this is a fighting blade, so it's plain. Uh, the, the ones that were used for parades and so on actually had uh, bluing and gold work on them about halfway down the blade. Uh, but the, the fighting blades were just left plain. And I already checked it. You, can't, you don't keep it sharp. No, I don't keep it sharp for <laughs> That's probably reasons. good for everyone, yeah. For dumb TV guys who run their fingers on it, that would not be a, a great television Cannot moment. shave with this. No. <laughs> so uh, people, you, you'll brandish this a little bit in, in the yes, war, yeah, you know, it, just yeah. to... And what happens is, for example, uh, uh, when we finish the battle scenarios, both armies salute each other and the officers salute with their swords, etc. So, yeah. The sword comes out in the scenario, and uh, and uh, you know we usually end. For example, if the British are victorious, we do a bayonet charge, and the officers draw their swords and move forward with the troops. And if anybody's been out here and seen the battle reenactments live, they are different every time, yep. and that's fun. But you know, they, they, it's a lot of noise, but there's also a lot of history, a lot of description, so mm -hmm. people understand actually what's going on in the yep. chaos. This is actually very nice because it's a fairly compact space, and everything is sort of packed into it. So it, it, it's it's kind of a theatrical version of something that would have sprawled over much larger areas. So what do you hope people get as you travel around and do these sorts of things? Um, we, what we want to communicate is a sense of what the past was, uh, what was involved in this war. I mean, it's the last war between Canada and the United States. It, it obviously settled the issue. We're not going to fight each other anymore. <laughs> Which we're all happy about. We, we like our Canadian friends, including Peter Twist. He's a historical consultant travels lots of places, and Mississippi 1812 is one of the highlights, I think. Yep. Thanks for being here, and thanks My for pleasure. being part of Mississippi 1812. From the battlefield to the battle of making pies, one local church makes over a thousand of them and gets everyone involved.
the crossroads, we're still on location here at River's Edge. And it's beautiful and it's fun and it's very fall-like. It, it, it even feels feeling like, like it. Fall, yeah. Feeling like fall. Well, we've got the jackets and the sweaters, not just a fashion statement. Maybe a fashion statement for her, but, but it, it actually comes in handy to be a little warmer out here. You think about fall, we talked about hay rides, we talked about Mississinawa 1812. Any traditions in your family? Man, I'd have to say a big one would have to be baking. <laughs> baking. Yeah, do you actually do the baking or just the, the sampling? The sampling, but yeah. it still counts. It that, still counts. That's the job at my house, too. I, I am very big on the taste testing kind of thing. But if you can imagine what it's like for your mom or someone to make one pie, one cake, or something like that, imagine 1,100 pies. My taste buds are going crazy. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> well, Marissa Hendrocker found a local church that has made over a thousand pies. They turned it into a family, family affair for everyone to be involved and to help give back. Making one pie is easy. Making 1,100 is more of a challenge. We started Tuesday and Wednesday night. We made pie crust. Everything's made by hand from scratch. And so we uh, made about eight to 900 pie crust, froze them. Uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday, we made all the crumb topping on Tuesday night. And today we're peeling 45 bushels of apples by hand, chopping them up, mixing them. The Maple Run Friends Church has lots of experience making these delicious desserts. We started making these pies maybe 20, 25 years ago. So we started out making them just with our youth group, and we made maybe 50 the first year. And then all these years later, now we're making 1,100. We get kids, we got families, we got, I mean, we, we just have everybody come together and do whatever it takes that they're capable of doing and helping us. And it, it's actually gotten easier over the years. So. The recipe might be simple, but it's special. Well, the main ingredient in our apple pies uh, is love. It's really a blessing. We have so much fun together. It gives us a chance to just talk with each other and get to know each other better as a church family. The best part about all of it is getting to yeah. hang out with the Maple Run family. Uh, that's what we do on Sundays as our congregation, but the beauty is at our church, we do it throughout the week also. Oh, the camaraderie is the best, the best thing, just being here. I mean, these are people we see every Sunday, but it certainly is a different role when we're here working with them. All of the proceeds from the pies go toward local and international missions, including the church's annual trip to Belize. We bring our whole church community together, uh, people that, you know, that normally can't help or don't know what to do and they can't, you know, that can't go to Belize, you know, physically can't do it, but they can come help make pies. The fundraiser is an annual hit, not just because of the taste, but because of the friendship behind it. Since it's been going on so many years, we just love to do it. You can tell that as long as uh, we've got apples, we're excited to, to do this once a year. It's one thing to make apple pies, it's another to make them with love. For Crossroads, I'm Marissa Hinderocker. I don't know about you, Randall, but I'm ready for some pie. <laughs> well, I heard the crew that went on that, they, they did get to taste a little bit, which is something a Crossroads requirement, as you know, but they had to work for it. They actually put Marissa to work rolling it out. I did, I saw that, and even uh, the other one that went, Ryan, he had a hairnet on, he was peeling <laughs> the apples. Well, we, we break them in early. Yeah, you gotta you gotta work on crossroads for you for your treats. But what and not a, just with the cameras. What a great what a great tradition for that church. And think about all the people who will receive that and knowing the work goes in. It's kind of like an early touch of Thanksgiving. It really is. It's you know, another fall tradition we were talking about. Absolutely. Well, we've had a great time at River's Edge, and we've also bounced around lots of other October traditions, as you've seen in this show. And if you've got other things you'd like us to visit, we love taking the show on location. We love showing up with our cameras. So why don't you email us at crossroads at inwest.edu. That's I-N-D-W-E-S dot E-D-U. Any story ideas you have or things going on in your community, you can also send us a letter or a postcard to Crossroads, W-I-W-U-T-V, 4201 South Washington Street, Marion, Indiana, 46953. Or you can stay connected to us by going on our Facebook page and liking it. That's facebook.com slash WIWTV. Or you can go on Twitter. Again, that's twitter.com slash WIWTV. Or maybe if you missed an episode or you want to wa watch it again, you can go on WIWTV.com and catch all of our past programming. Again, that's WIWTV.com. And there's so many things going on in the community as we wrap up high school football and start looking forward to IWU basketball and all the things we'll be doing with Crossroads and the, you know, in the next few weeks. It's pretty exciting, pretty fun. And 
get out there before it gets bitterly cold. Well, like you said, we'll October is an we'll exciting be out, month. We'll be out in the cold too, but not, not quite as much. Maybe next time I'll have a jacket, <laughs> hopefully. In, in the meantime, you might want to check out River's Edge uh, Family Golf Center, now done up perfectly for October weather and enjoy one of those hay rides as, some of, as Shaley got to. Oh, it's fun. I will testify <laughs> to that. It's fun. She did. <laughs> In the meantime, for everyone who's been working on this program, I'm Randall King. And I'm Shaley Clark. The Crossroads of Life bring people together and that's what we try to do here each week. Thanks for watching everyone. So long.